What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and today we're talking Halo Infinite. Yeah, I know it's been a while, and the last we talked about Halo was when we had the, you know, Microsoft cuts that either both broke the entire internet as well as my sanity. To think we finally passed a year of the title, and that we finally see the coveted season three of Halo Infinite. And see how our faith has been rewarded. With all the hype behind this update, the question is, does it actually land without breaking both ankles? Well, we actually have fun things to do in year two of Halo Infinite, and will this be the turning point that Halo Infinite needs? Let's jump right into it. Halo Infinite has gone down a really bumpy road to this point. The first year has definitely been lackluster at best, with a few moments of brightness for this entire franchise. But once the Microsoft cuts happened, the entire fan base exploded. Fire three for three, Halo is dead. Halo should be a multi-plat. I was ready for the Halo mobs to start killing people in the middle of the street. However, when the smoke cleared and the season three trailer had dropped, there was a little bit of skepticism about whether or not this update would actually land. So far, season three has met with some good reception, but the question is, is it enough to change the narrative about three for three? Let's start off with the good. One of the biggest faults that three for three had when it came to developing Halo Infinite was the lackluster amount of maps and modes that we had at the very start of the game. Season three added three maps total, Oasis, Cliffhanger and Chasm, all of which I thought were pretty damn good. Oasis being a research facility looking into Forerunner tech and is honestly one of the best looking maps I've seen so far in Halo Infinite. Gives us a nice desert terrain with some good scenery that is considered one of the largest maps so far. I honestly love the map because it, if you look at it, it's so massive in size that it gives a lot of room to work and encourages vehicle combat. You're telling me that we have a large map that looks great with many vehicles spawning in it and we get power weapons on the daily? Wow, that's, did I just poop myself? Most of the BTB maps at this point have been very restrictive on its vision, mainly because if you look at some of the lanes in which they produce throughout maps like high power, as well as deadlock, that it kind of restricts the amount of types of vehicles that you can have. However, Oasis changes that idea and creates a wide open area so that the vehicles like Tank or the Wraith can I have kind of a movement or kind of different directions you can kind of attack through here? Oasis kind of reminds me of a Halo Reach BTB map where it was more about the kind of situations you can create on your own rather than being forced to kind of jumble into one specific area. Honestly, just a treat overall. Cliffhanger was also a surprise to me. It matches the size of maps like Behemoth Launch Site, but it doesn't reek like a weak old diaper. It has multiple power weapon locations, as well as a diverse ways to combat, which really just creates a lot more fun opportunities because it's so much larger in scale compared to some others. It doesn't feel one dimensional to me. You aren't dependent on securing one location, you can constantly move around and it's fun to try out different types of strategies. People like to bitch about the idea when maps are too large, but in my opinion, it really creates more opportunities for you to have fun with it rather than be focused on doing one thing at a time. Maps like Chasm really got me nervous when I first played it. The aesthetic looks great and it's cut from the campaign, which was pretty cool. But the first few games I had on Chasm, I either was falling down way too often or most of the fighting was done on the alleyways, leaving the mill to be like a no man's land. Most times I left the trench, I was either getting backhanded by bandit rifles and it was almost like an insta kill. As I played it more, I felt like it wasn't bad overall, not the best, but I put it in the middle of the pack. And when it comes to the modes, they added Escalation Slayer, and honestly, it's a mirror of gun game. I had a lot of fun playing it on stream, and I honestly think they did a really good job here. It's a good change up to a lot of those social playlists that you see, because it's just, it's just fun to play. They have both free for all and team escalation, which I had a lot of fun playing on the brand new maps, but I do want to test it out on all the other remaining maps that aren't really tied to that playlist. It only gives us new ways to play. And I, honestly, that is a good thing when it comes to three for three and their Halo game. Now we got to talk about the echoes within storyline. Now a quick little history lesson. We've had basically a mediocre story expansions since the start of the game when it comes to season two and even some sneak peeks that we had with the winter update. For those of you who don't remember, season two basically was the end result of basically nothing happening the entire time and us trying to secure Eratus from Din's mind. By how, you ask? By playing multiplayer. And every cutscene that we had was literally us staring at a character and them speaking to us 
with no real action really happening. So honestly, my expectation was pretty low entering into season three. The first time I saw it, I kind of laughed a little because it did that famous previously on Halo. Like it was acting like it was a damn TV show. They made it seem like there's a lot more going on than what actually happened. But when we get to the new cutscenes, surprisingly, they were pretty awesome. They looked great and they were intriguing. They gave me zero reason to care for Spartan loot or Din before, but they gave these characters much more depth than what we have seen previously. Basically, the entire cutscene was us going on an acid trip along down Did's mind during that time where the Ratus had controlled him. It was having him reflect on the past, and a lot of the cutscenes here were really badass. It seems like if you don't know the background of Din, it was that he had a really rough life up to this point, where him and his squad were ambushed by the Banished, and a lot of his, his squad mates had died from drones. He puts the whole thing on himself, and Eratus is just showing him that no matter what decision you made, the end result was going to be the same. Eratus was giving us a lot of cryptic words throughout this entire cutscene, and I really thought they did a good job here trying to create some mystique behind this entire thing. Like, no matter what, that this was ending the same way. What does that exactly mean? A lot of people are speculating on this entire thing, and it's actually pretty interesting. However, the final line is honestly the best one. Death to you, triumph. For me, it gives me a lot of vibes that were leading right to infection, and it seems as though season three is where infection is going to be dropping. And then they give us the final scene where the grenade shows on that door that there's the Oni Sim. Now, if you don't know, this facility where they're training these new Spartan fours are exactly where the Oni facility used to be. It's a good concept to drop because it creates that idea of what does this mean next? This is way better than any other season expansion story we've had to this point, and I think they did a great job at setting up a possible continuation of this side story down the line. It gave me more reason to care about these characters and it gives them better dialogue overall. Now, moving on, oh boy, we see the brand new season pass. Is it worth $10? And honestly, I could say it does. I've always been one of those people that has always been skeptical about buying season passes, but you know your boy has always bitten the bullet and bought each one of them. And compared to all the other battle passes I've had, I think season three is probably the best one. It includes a lot of cool content, and on top of that, it actually gives you enough credits to purchase the next season pass when we get there. It's it's amazing. It's almost like 3 for 3 is trying not to be cheap bastards after all. Even though the store is still overpriced where you're buying bundles of blue for $5 a pop and other store items are still equaling close to $10 to $20. And what's even good about this battle pass is that even if you don't want to buy worth the $10, the free content they add here is still pretty good to the point where it seems like you're not forced to buy it but it only encourages you to get the remaining pieces if you do. It's like you're investing in the $10 now, and if you complete the entire battle pass, you're getting the next season free. And within the battle pass, you're automatically included both the Mirage and Chimera set of armor. In my opinion, both look pretty cool, and each one is very distinct in the way it looks. The Mirage armor mirrors that of what we saw in the books. Very sleek, very good color combinations. Chimera is also a different take on armor and gives off more of a Skeletor style of armor that looks similar to the crisis armor set definitely different but that honestly is a good thing to allow gamers to be more creative with their customization the overall goal of this battle pass is to get people invested and feeling like this is worth the purchase and i think that three for three did a good job with this season's battle pass because it honestly does involve a lot of good things here that you can purchase. Now, granted, it isn't perfect. Like, the fact that I still can't pick colors for my color shaders is still a problem. But overall, I think they did a good job with this battle pass. 3 for 3 really needs to reset the narrative on how people think about them when it comes to these battle passes and the store. And I think if you continue along this path of the battle pass being worth the purchase, then people will be more inclined to make that deal rather than skipping it for the next season. And with the good, we have to talk about the bad. With the additions of things like the bandit rifle and the shroud screen, I do have some criticism. The shroud screen is actually better than I originally thought, and it does cover a very wide area for being somewhat of a smoke screen type of attachment that you have in Halo Infinite. But honestly, the DMR should be way better. Now, I keep referencing it as the DMR because to me, that's how the gun should play out. The Bandit is a changeup from the classic DMR of the past. No scope with a pretty large recoil changes the way you play it compared to Halo 5. There are a lot of people out there that love the way the Bandit plays, which I respect fully, but I felt like this is the worst version of the DMR compared to Halo 5, Halo 4, and Halo Reach. It still hits that five-shot headshot kill, 
but the range on this gun is completely off. Most people I heard from would say that adding a scope to it would make the gun top tier mirroring the Halo 5 pistol. But since it doesn't, it means that it is a downgrade from the Halo battle rifle. Like when I play, I'd rather pick up the battle rifle, the AR, and sometimes even the pistol over the bandit rifle if it, I had a choice to use it. If you were to add a scope on it, yeah, sure, it would probably make the gun overall better. But for people to say that make this the standard ranked starter, it's a little much. People are saying that this would create a larger skill gap for players in ranked and would divide the players who master bandit compared to those that don't. But the point of Halo is to include both the sweaty players and non-sweaty players. Let's look at the Halo games that had the highest and most coveted Halo multiplayer games out there. Halo 2 and Halo 3 both used the battle rifles for their ranked game and no one ever complained that we need an even sweatier weapon to get us on that level of top tier sweat in all competitive matches. But for some reason, we need to go back in time to Halo 5 and bring in the Halo 5 pistol back into our lives in order for us to really fully enjoy competitive. Like, come on, that's just that's just dumb. Maybe it requires me to play more of the Bandit Rifle to understand the sweaty formula that people keep talking about. But don't tell me that ranked game modes seem shallow just because it's not the Halo 5 pistol. Now, even though I talked about the Battle Pass being good overall, there were some things I do need to criticize them on, specifically the helmets. The helmets in this Battle Pass seem relatively pretty ugly compared to what we saw in Season 2 and the Winter Update. I don't know what it is, but for some reason, the average helmets for the new Mirage and Chimera Cores look pretty fugly. It's almost like they got really lazy or they went said, hey, let's go get the Halo 5 art designers so we can give them a job to do something. And all of a sudden, every helmet we saw for these new armor cores were identical to the previous Halo games armor set, which everybody, every Halo fan I've talked to says it was pretty shot. I mean, some of them just look like crap. Like, for example, you look at the Neath helmet, looks like a clan with herpes. The extender Gyphos gives your Spartan the fattest cheeks since the Godfather. And the Viper Shroud, it's like you're not even trying at this point. Now, I'm not saying that every armor piece needs to make me sob like a baby every time I look at it, but it feels like Season 2 and the Winter Update had way better helmets than this season. It confuses me because if you look back in the past, both in the old Halo games under Bungie and even back in Halo 4, there were a lot of helmets out there that look way better than these. You're telling me you can't go back to Reach or Halo 3 and pull back some classics that you can bring to this game? I'm still waiting for the Hibusa helmet to come back into Halo Infinite. The best part about customization is being able to deck your Spartan out any way you see fit. And the biggest problem I see is that if your helmets don't really match the level of good that you've had in previous seasons, then all of a sudden it just feels like you're getting lazy. And three for three, you need all the good publicity and all the good positive energy at this point. So you definitely need to ramp up the different types of helmets that you can have that make it just look better. Now, even though we get new game modes like Escalation Slayer, which I think are great overall, some of the things I didn't notice when I was playing in this new update was there's a lot of missing playlists that were taken away. Like if you go look at Quick Play, you'll notice that there are certain maps and modes that have been removed completely. For some reason, maps like Imperion have been taken completely out of Quick Play. It's like 3 for 3 can take out all their best modes and maps, but somehow, some way, Stockpile is still of game mode in big team battle. Stockpile is one of the most hated, wait, no, sorry, the most despised game mode in all of Halo Infinite, and we still have not seen it adjusted, changed, or adapted, or even have a damn exorcism on it this entire time. 3 for 3 has come forward and confirmed that these modes and maps have been taken out of certain playlists to be adjusted, tested, and kind of changed up so they can match the level of play they want it to be. Unless a game mode is utterly in a broken state, then why do you need to remove it completely? You can always adjust the game mode in the background and have it in the field to be tested by the player. That's literally how every developer has adjusted game modes since the Xbox era. If anything, quick play and social playlists should be the perfect testing ground for using these new variants of modes and maps. 3 for 3 has some really good maps and modes to play at this point. And that's why I'm confused and why you would remove some of the best maps and mode combinations out there. And with the bad, we have to talk about the ugly. One of the biggest problems I have with season three, and it's not that we're not getting great content. It just feels like we should be getting more with these types of updates. I want more. You know, it's, it feels good to finally get content to play. The game feels fun at its core, but it's just like getting new armor cores, new maps, new modes, new weapons and equipment. You're telling me you can't get me another equipment and a weapon here? I know you have some stuff behind the scenes over there that are in development. Can, can we just get like a sneak peek of it? Can we get some more of those, those weapons you got hiding back there?
I've seen so many prototypes that were in development during this entire time from previous guns that you, you've had from Halo 4 and Halo 5. Why not give us some more weapons that were made in the previous game? Where's the saw? Where's the plasma caster? Where's the grenade? Did they just disappear? Even the maps, man. Do you, you remember when we dropped that Forge playlist? People were losing their damn minds. Imagine giving us one more big team battle map, one more arena map to play. You'll be adding more good maps to this already stacked season three. Or even expand the Forge playlist. Have us not just have four maps, give us six. And possibly I'm being selfish if I'm asking for more and I should be happy with what I have. But it's almost like you literally have had blue balls for the entire development of Halo Infinite and throughout its first year of its release. Then all of a sudden out of the dark, moist bowels, of the internet and there's a small glimmer of light that gives you some hope for the future and it just disappears you just want more to at least bring you into out of that that smoke toxic field i want more you want people to get excited for what's here i just want to see more of it and i think a lot of people are on the same boat as me and lastly it's kind of weird but the update kind of had me smelling something it is that swamp ass or is that the lack of transparency what is it that stench I've smelled it before. 343 has done something weird with the most recent update. And one of the biggest questions I've seen from most fans at this point, where are the cross-core customizations? The last time I checked, 343 was pretty adamant on getting us cross-core customization fully by season three or season four. And that was a common simpleton. I thought, hey, there's no way that 343 was going to straight up lie to us and tell us that they're going to promise us to do one thing and then just do something completely different. Giving every fan here something happy to look forward to and then stabbing in the back. I mean, there's, there's, there's no way way there'd be that dumb right right then all of a sudden I'm, i must have been hammered or something because i stumbled upon the store and i see that one of the bundles that are available is a purchase of a blue shading only for the mirage armor set you what um 343 are you only selling one color scheme for one of your cores here where's the rest of it you literally told us the shaders would be cross core no matter which update it was but why why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? It's super confusing, but maybe 3 for 3 is trying to feel a little spicy and see how much money they can get away with before people notice. Because I'm sorry, but we're not entertaining this scheme here. You're going to add everything that was cross-core like you promised, and we won't have a problem here. And if you don't, I'll go tell Sean W or Halo Follower to cry for at least 15 minutes on a video, and you don't want that happening. Overall, Season 3 has exceeded expectations by not only me, but by many Halo fans. Up to this point, you've seen many people declare that Halo Infinite is dead and it's time to move on. And based on the magical Steam charts alone, then a lot of people would agree with that sentiment. However, since the winter update, I kind of kept my hopes alive because feeling that in the year two of Halo Infinite, 3 for 3 really needed a redemption arc. Is season three worth jumping into? The answer is yes. If you're looking for a good experience and fun things to do, then season three has definitely answered the call. With good maps, modes, and an actual intriguing story with great unlockables, I feel like they've done a good job here. My biggest critique is I want more of the updates like this one, but the positive is that this is the start of the three month season cycle. If people were to ask me whether or not this is the turning point for Halo Infinite, my answer is confidently yes. People may doubt me, but it seems that 3 for 3 is finally answering the biggest problem the game has suffered since its start, the lack of content. It has played the game since day one and every criticism I have seen that the game was fun to play, but there's not enough to do. With new modes, maps, weapons, and more, it solves the problem. Now, I'm not saying that everything here is the end-all, be-all, perfect game that you would want since day one, because it isn't. If you look at the game now, compared to what it was when it first dropped, it is completely different. You can't tell me there hasn't been a major shift in how the game is performing. I've been playing Halo Infinite since day one, through every single update we've seen to this point. And I can tell you personally, I can sense a change in the tides. If you don't believe me, the magical steam charts that everyone uses to justify success proves it. In one update, the game tripled the player count and that doesn't include Xbox or PC Game Pass. Imagine what will happen when Infection drops during Season 3, or when Progression drops during Season 4. And based on the leaks, it seems like that's going to be the case. It's been roughly two months since my last Halo video, and at that point, a lot of people thought that it was going to be the end. My belief is that if Halo Infinite follows along this path, then in my next video, we won't be talking about whether Halo is finished. We'll see it on its own comeback. Thank you everyone for watching. What do you think about Season 3? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this type of content, hit a thumbs up and subscribe to see when we drop our next video. Join us on Twitch where we stream two to three days a week. And you can find that in the description below. You can join us on all of our socials also located in the description below. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.